guys. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do for the next video, so I decided to just share with one of my favorite family stories. The first time I was ever left home alone. It's kind of my default story. For whenever you, for people like want to do icebreakers, whether you're at work, at school, and they ask you, what's an interesting story from you? This is the one I tend to use. All right, before we get going, I just want to say that I love my family, but they're human and they make mistakes. And before any of you guys judge them too harshly, I want you guys to remember that you're only seeing a small part of the story. We good? We good, great. Let's get this party pumping. Okay, let's start off with some context. I am a midlife crisis. My sisters were about to leave the nest and my parents panicked. Most people get a car or go on a cruise. My parents decided to try and have another kid. Eventually they chilled out, but by then it was kind of too late. So the point here is that there's a large age gap between me and my sisters. And by the time I was in kindergarten, my sisters had apartments and their own lives and weren't super close to the house anymore, but close enough that my parents kept using them as babysitters. So, within state lines. Okay, and one time, my mom gets told last minute that she has to go into work early, so she won't be able to drop me off at kindergarten. So, of course, she taps my sisters to see if one of them can do it. However, when she called my sister Red, the names have been changed to protect the innocent. It was rather late, and my sister had just done uh, her crappy minimum wage job. So she groggily agreed with my mother to pick me up at, and drop me off at kindergarten, just so she could go to bed and, you know, sleep. When I got out of bed, of course, there was no one there, but I didn't know that at first. I thought my begging had finally worked. You see, as a kid, I hated getting up early, a trait I still maintain. So, I would whine, I want to be like normal kids. Don't see the connection? Well, I watched a lot of superhero shows along with my Sesame Street and Dora the Explorer. And they all used this line. And I thought it would work for my problem even though it never worked for any of the characters. And saving the world is a bit, um, different than, you know, getting up early in the morning. However, oh, that didn't matter to me because clearly it worked for me. Get on my level, Serena. So I took my time getting out of bed, waking up, relaxing, all that good stuff. Eventually, I started to look around the house. I don't know why, I was probably hungry or something. So, once I realized I was home alone, I got to work. Now, I didn't go full Kevin McAllister, aka the child Rambo. Instead, I changed out of my pajamas and into footy pajamas. Because, you know, they were like armor. Don't question my kindergarten logic. It makes sense. And it also meant I didn't have to put on my socks. So, once I got, my, got those on, I put on my shoes, grabbed the leash, and grabbed the dog. Whose name is Stockings, by the way. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. But not their dignity. And I planned on walking all the way to school. Now, this isn't as strange as it sounds, I swear. Or dumb as it sounds. Because when I was a kid, I thought of school as a safe place, as most kids should. And it was actually pretty close to my house. Like, around the corner, through a rose tunnel, and past the field. Side note. This rose tunnel is really freaking cool. Like, the school area and the field around it have a few different access points, 
so people don't have to go all the way around to the front to, you know, get their kids to school. I don't know who decided that, but I do know that the guy who lived next to this particular access point decided it was too boring and grew a bunch of roses along the sides of the path. It's absolutely gorgeous in spring. It's very cottagecore, but, you know, better. He even made this little box with some shears inside so people can uh, pick roses whenever they want. And it's also kind of fun to see him at work. But maybe I'm just easily impressed. Of course, in kindergarten, I didn't know enough to be impressed. So I just marched through there like I owned the place. And of course, I brought stockings for protection because that's what TV and stories told me dogs did. However, uh, considering how chill he tended to be at home and how excited he got on walks, I don't think he would have been much protection if someone had attacked me. He probably would have just wandered off to go mark his territory and sniff some, sniff the mail on the trees, you know? Not exactly the most protective doggo, was he? And... Surprisingly, Kindergarten Me was able to keep a hold of his leash, so maybe he was a little protective, or maybe he was just being nice and chill. Okay, so while walking along to the school, I met these two girls, who I was convinced were high schoolers, because they were taller than me. But considering the middle school was right next to the elementary school, I don't think they were high schoolers. I was a very receptive kindergartner. So, I explained to these nice girls that I had been left home alone and I had to hurry to the school because it was Saturday and my teacher was only there for a little bit of time on Saturdays. And in case you're wondering, no, it was not actually Saturday. So, no points for kindergarten me for being able to tell time, or the days apart. But, honestly, currently I feel the same, fam. Coronavirus has stolen my sense of time. Okay, back to the story. They did the smart thing instead, and took me to the principal's office. Pretty sure I missed most of the day anyway, so they just called my mom and had me wait in the office. While waiting there, one of the school nurses got stocking some water. So good on her. Thanks for that, lady. However, um, may I ask, where was my treat? I was the one who had to face the wilds of the world at a tender age. I should have at least gotten a lollipop out of this story. Okay. Anyways, my mom picks me up, and as far as I know, there was no consequences other than my sister feeling guilty. Which kind of surprised me, considering all the horror stories I've heard about people having their kids taken away for lesser reasons. But I'm even more surprised that nothing happened the second time I was left home alone, considering the cops showed up to that one. But that's a story for another day. Okay, peeps, what was the first time you were left home alone? And what should I do next time? Tell me about it in the comments. Is there a particular topic you want me to talk about, or do you want me to tell more of these little stories? Okay, do all the clickety-click things, and have a great and safe rest of your day.